Greetings, everyone. Um, I'm so happy to be participating in this in this panel. Thanks to, to Ari Shedders for making this happen. And uh, thanks to the conference organizers. Just a pity that I, I can't be there in person. Um, things are just so fluid right now. We, we have to improvise and, and do what we can with the time that we have. Speaking of time, I'm 20 seconds in, let's begin. The original title for this paper was The View from the Stage Reflecting on Hip Hop Biography's Transformative uh, Practice. This is uh, what uh, Shal will, will reflect in, 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 in the conference program. But since then, um, I had a bit of fun with the paper, working on it for a, a book on hip hopography. And um, the revised title is, the completed version, Recalculating Hip Hopography and Decenting Hegemonic Scholarship. And so uh, hopefully um, you'll see why I changed the paper as, as, as I take you into, in, into uh, a snapshot of, of the work. Um, so basically this paper shares um, autoethnographic reflections on a transdisciplinary multilingual hip hop project uh, that combines scholarship, activism, uh, education and art into a multimodal book and EP project um, that is both for academic and, and non-academic uh, publics out there. Uh, the book is called Never Again, and the related EP, and if you open up the book, you'll see a QR code, you can use your phone and actually download the EP. The EP is called Hashtag in the Care of B. Um, so the project took its cue from autoethnographic approaches to research that challenges, quote, canonical ways of uh, doing research and representing others and treats research as a political, socially just and socially conscious act. We attempted to challenge hierarchies between uh, researcher and research subject by including a South, African hip -hop a South African hip hop activist on the editorial team, Emil Janssen, specifically of the Heal the Hood project, and by arranging the book by theme and not by genre of writing. So each section is organized by theme and you will see a mix of scholarly writing with other, other, other forms of writing. Um, um, reflexive, um, um, biographical, um, transcriptions of interviews, transcriptions of panel discussions, of public lectures, um, as well as creative writing. Of course, the EP adds another layer as well as uh, visual modalities in the form of um, essays by, by uh, um, a photo essay, in actual fact, by, by Ferenc Isaac, someone, Isaacs, who uh, spends a lot of time uh, snapping hip hop artists, specifically dancers. So the voices of the scholars were effectively decentered to foreground the narratives and critical reflections of the hip hop artists and activists themselves. Uh, likewise, in my role as co-producer of the EP in the KFB, um, I invited creative collaborations that spoke to a number of themes that uh, my co conspirator my co-producer, -co -co uh, Bradley, Bradley Luedevek, that, that, that we had discussed and then took to a pool of people to see whether they're keen to participate in this. Some of the themes include looking at the legacy of apartheid, neoliberal economics, racialized inequalities, class inequalities specifically, but of course we know they, 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 they can be gendered as well. Uh, language and racial identity politics, a big issue in, in, in the book. And then of course, uh, gang violence and, and state corruption, or as we know it in the South African context, state capture. In fact, we literally have a song called State Capture. Uh, check out the music video on, on YouTube. Uh, it's on my channel. Anyway, so we've been working with an autoethnographic frame. Um, one might say that this project produced a community hip Hop auto ethnography, which uses the personal experience of researchers in collaboration to illustrate how a community manifests particular social or cultural issues. To be more specific, this project started as a conversation between H. Sami Alim, Emil Johnson, and, and Quentin Williams, and, and, and yours truly. And the model that, that, that uh, when we shared this with Ali, with Sami Ali, uh, shared this idea with him, and he immediately remembered, of course, his, the book that he worked on with, with, with James Spady and Sami Mugeli, uh, the 2006 hip-hopography, The Global Cipher, Hip-Hop Culture and Consciousness. 
right? And so the book uh, captures conversations, uh, the metaphor of the cipher um, being used to sort of curate different conversations with a range of hip hop activists and artists. And, um, and that's what we work with. And a lot of the work that we'd already been doing, Quentin Williams and I, and certainly myself with Bush Radio's Alchemy pro uh, program. And then of course, Heal the Hood projects, various, um, you know, um, hip hop events and, and, and talk shops, panels, workshops, and so on and so on. We had all of this material and, and a lot of those events that I participated in, I documented and, and shared on my channel as, as video edits. And so a lot of that material uh, became um, a sort of a springboard into our own book project, right? So with Spady and, and company's book in mind, uh, H. Hamia Lim, you know, offered a, a scholarly definition of hip-hopography, and this is how he sees it. It's an approach to the study of hip-hop culture that combines the methods of ethnography, biography, right, and social and oral history. And so all of those elements are certainly a feature of, of the, the Never Again project and, and uh, the process that led to it. Importantly, hip-hopography is not traditional ethnography. Hierarchical divisions between the researcher and the research are purposely kept to a minimum, even as they are interrogated. Knowledge of the aesthetics, values, and history, as well as the use of language, culture, and means and modes of interaction of the hip hop nation speech community are essential to the study of hip hop culture. And so a lot of that um, method is reflected in the work itself, um, capture the story in the voice of, of the participants, allow them to co curate with you to edit. Uh, to determine what the parameters are, what the terms of, of interaction and, and production are. And so it was meant to be flat, it was meant to be hierarchical. But, you know, if you look at where my work with hip hop artists and activists and scholars, we had ended up, I certainly didn't start like that. And this is partly why, you know, uh, I'm doing this presentation because it's a reflection on the, the sort of, the, 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 the evolution of, of my own research methodology. When I started out, I was really just doing discourse analysis. I was analyzing what MCs were saying. So when I said I did research in hip hop, I was really just looking at hip hop lyrics, right? And when I had the opportunity, I would interview the artist if the artist was available. If the artist had music videos available, remember this is pre-YouTube, this was the very early 90s, uh, mass media was, 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 was the route you would go and otherwise, you know, community radio stations and Bush Radio was certainly a vehicle for a lot of community artists in Cape Town. So discourse analysis, you in the text or you and your interviewee as well, that supplements uh, your analysis of the text, straight up discourse analysis with, you know, with a little bit of Roland Barthes and, and Derrida in the mix and so on and so on, um, you know. Um, attempting to look at other kinds of modalities beyond just the text. But really, I came from an English literary background. What I was doing at the time was not necessarily considered literary. It was well outside of the canon. And so um, while I was pushing those boundaries, my method was still pretty much what it was. And apologies, I should have warned anybody, if anybody was triggered by, the, by, by, by this violent image, this is what attracted me to Prophets of the City, to this album specifically, uh, Age of Truth, on cassette, 1993, uh, I'm watching uh, a TV show, um, a music video show, and they play this, this song, and you know that it was accidental, you know, it wasn't intended. Uh, if anybody knew what the contents of the music video would be, you know, sort of in this ballpark, uh, bringing the violence of the township, the violence of resist against, resistance against the apartheid state, but also the apartheid state's use of the third force of, of clandestine covert operations to destabilize townships and, and murder activists. All of this was going down. So this is what drew me to this album. And, uh, and eventually I got to interview them. So a lot of my writing was focused on visual analysis, whatever was available, but then also looking at the text, 
But when I got to the actual interview with them in 94, um, an interview, you know, interview with DJ ADD and Shaheen Arefi, you know, the, the founding members of Crafts of the City, what was clear to me is like a lot of my thinking about what hip hop is, my assumptions about the literacy and the sort of uh, the frames, the political frames of reference of the artists, how well educated they were, uh, all of those assumptions were turned on its head. And so whilst my master's project was still largely discourse analysis, a lot of what they were saying about race, class, and language and the validation of black modes of speech began to change how I saw hip hop and change the way in which I would interact with them. Whereas with my master's project, I was largely basing my research on one interview with the artists and analysis of the text. Um, what Shaheen Arefin is saying in this particular quote about using street language, the language of the streets, right? Uh, Hamtau or Kaps or Afrikaps, right? Black modes of speech, um, validating black multilingual expression on the African continent, as opposed to being ashamed of it, seeing it as a marker of pride and not of shame. Um, they were doing the work that school educators were supposed to be doing the transition to, 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 to a democracy, but were not doing. And, you know, more than two de decades after the fall of apartheid, if you're going to schools, schools are still pushing a mono or bilingual approach to education and are not doing enough to support, to affirm um, multilingual expression. So there's absolutely no talk of culturally sustaining pedagogy in the average classroom. Yeah, they were doing this work. So a lot of the work that they set up informed some of my later interaction with hip hop artists. And I'll get to Get, get to that in a bit, but let me just say, in terms of my trajectory, it wasn't until, until after I'd done this master's dissertation that I got to hang out and get to really know hip hop artists, and largely because, you know, I, I, I started to work as an art journalist, I started to cover events, I stuck up a friendship with Gasabani Karp, uh, an offshoot of Cops of the City, performing in largely Karps or Hamdal or Afrikaps, depending on, on how you see, um, um, you know, uh, the language and what lies behind it is standard Afrikaans and the history of Afrikaans and nationalism and how Afrikaans and nationalists used a particular version of the language to push standard Afrikaans at the expense of Kaps or Afrikaans. But that's for another paper. Let me just move on and stay with this, 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 this discussion of method. Essentially, I got to know them well, got to hang out and hanging out, you know, Think about what anthropologists do. They hang out. I, I started to slowly to become a de facto ethnographer. I got to know Heal the Hood Project quite well. I used to go to the Indaba. I used to cover it as a journalist. Um, the first major interview that 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 the Heal the Hood Project uh, had with the Mail and Guardian. That was, I was the journalist who covered that around '99. Um, I mean, hanging out, getting to know people, hanging out at Bush Radio as well. Um, participating events, uh, co-curating, co putting together curricular programs for, for talk shops, for workshops, for, 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 for educational uh, initiatives with hip hop artists and activists, right? And that's slowly through, through the years how we got to the point where we actually had a lecture series attached to the hip hop in Daba and eventually worked on, 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 on Never Again together. But also just to take a moment to acknowledge that in that process, it wasn't just about what I was doing with Heal the Hood or with Prophets of the City. One of the founding members of Prophets of the City, Shaheen Ariftin, senior with his arm and arm, uh, leading scholar, Geneva Smithman, he had started work at a, at a community radio station with Nasli Abrams using hip hop pedagogy, right? And, and um, people like Geneva Smitherman or H. Sami Alem would come through and, and share their expertise. And that was the sort of space that I was, I was also located in and got to plug into and learn a great deal about. And um, this was around 2000, 2004, between you know, that window period. And this is where Alem's you know, explanation of hypopography makes sense, uh, especially when he talks about the ethic and the emic. You don't impose the framework. You you build it from the ground up in consultation with people who are doing the work. That's what we started to do. Ify literally also did the same thing. I worked with former Brasifanikar B-Boy, uh, seen in the shot, the one with dreadlocks, 
uh, behind the keyboard uh, to the right of me, that's me with the guitar, in a, in a back, back room studio recording the EP for In the Key of B. So uh, a hip hop producer from the townships, uh, from um, Fairway specifically, perhaps a slightly more posh, slightly more middle class version of the K Platt. Um, Right, and so essentially he and I, he's an instrumentalist, he's a dancer, but he's also a multi-instrumentalist. So we had this, a number of assumptions about how we're going to do this, bring the instrumentalists who come from non-hip hop traditions, bring them together with hip hop MCs. Essentially what happened very quickly is our understanding of how we're going to do this, uh, we would have to renegotiate how we do things. We, we couldn't come in with a, a, a pre-prepared agenda strategy for how to, to get hip hop MCs to write with us and to record with us, we had to change our entire production process. Um, and so we're running out of time. Uh, there is a point about cultural appropriation and how our entire project was, gay, was geared towards undoing the harm of cultural appropriation in black communities. And in this case, in hip hop communities specifically by changing the power dynamic between research and, and research subject that because I'm running out of time, I'm just going to skip straight ahead to my to the conclusion because it speaks to some of what I just said about the production process with the EP. In retrospect, my collaboration with hip hop artists often pushed me out of my comfort zone, forcing me to recalculate and renegotiate the terms upon which I interact with them as a scholar, collaborator, activist, and performing artist. Perhaps none more so than negotiating the duties of live performances. Um, you know, or having to adapt my spoken word performances and lead guitar contributions so that my performances work in the context of a hip hop production or a live performance. Um, as an emerging scholar, hip hop heads allowed me or challenged me to rethink my own assumption about hip hop's ability to develop critical literacy and that thereby build, you know, democratic citizenship. It also allowed me to think carefully about my own research trajectory. Either I aspire to conform to the norms set by scholars in English literary studies, which I escaped eventually, and thereby reinforce, thereby reinforce neocolonial traditions, or explore new modalities, genres, research methodologies beyond discourse analysis and critical analysis of texts. I was challenged to think carefully about the ethics of my research in relation to reciprocity and scholars' power turn field work into symbolic capital for themselves at the expense of the communities that they represent in their scholarship. Never again, and the EP project in the Key of B point to one response to these challenges and allow one to imagine scholarship beyond that colonial and imperialist inheritance. Both of these projects uh, allow us to think about a collaborative work as deeply in Ellis Adams and Bachman's uh, discussion of community hip hop autoethnography by challenging hierarchies. More importantly, uh, it allows us to build upon Spady and Miguel's uh, work on hypography by employing emic principles to extend beyond largely ethic scholarly modes of inquiry and expression into creative, creative collaboration, co-creation, workshop programming, co-editing, and on occasion, performance. In essence, never again, and in the KFB, point to possibilities for decentering hegemonic scholarly practices. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening. Inhale determination, persist with elevation. Resistance is a meditation. We were never slaves, let me explain this. My people, we are ancient civilization. The foundation, the pyramids are built on human nature. Propagate in danger. Truth about creators, regal game changers. The Cape Rats is my palace plated. Served when I debated, lifted off the weightless. Boundaries they dictated, but we keep demonstrating. No weapon formed against me, my cup is never empty. In the land of plenty, I advance my entry into a sanctuary, a military mind. Too many times I see my mother cry as she carries burdens lovingly so I can fly. Fortified with pride, undivided attention, persevering my stride, harmonizing ascension.
about a life of being lost in this long walk to liberty Deliberately fueling flames while fuel costs limits We, the people, have been patient and persevered their policies Puppetries grow politics that pleases these democracies A mockery is when we to money be secondary Political property, pole dancing to industry in the dust We do battle for land while we be dusty And thus be the irony of townships underwater sea Selling water scarcity, ancestry lived abundantly Abandoned fake purity, the bushman's inside all of this Said Carlo versus Mitchell's play, now pain divided again While corporate funded media drives the divide to attain A bigger split and vote, stoke chase players of note Whites under attack, so blacks against the rope Quote Uncle Neville at least, enough says good as a feast they sound in scarcity while we've survived on the least shall persevere, there shall be no fear, all my people dear, all my people near. From Pontas, the plains, to Carlo, to Langa, Pontas, right next to Langa, the plain, right next to Sicarlo, all my people near, we should have no fear, it's plain to see, don't you see? The struggles, the troubles, the many cudgels of hate, of self-hate, should be directed at the predatory state that never hesitates on what move to make when the people cry, when the people try to rise against the tide of crimes against our people, all our people, all our people, all our people, all our people. All our people. Thank mm-hmm. you.